Good evening, Sacred Grounds. Good evening, evening Martha Joseph. I had a feature in November 22nd and had some poems lined up for that, um, but that kind of got blown away by uh, a lifelong friend who uh, I, I made the feature all about instead. And uh, this is Alan Acacia, who has, say, yes. who has been here, who is featured here, yeah. and uh, who I knew for 53 years. Uh, he succumbed to uh, lung cancer on Christmas night, and uh, this kind of, I like this photograph because it gives you an idea of who this guy is. This is, this is a guy dressed as a fool who on April Fool's Day went out and uh, blew bubbles at passing cars on University Avenue in Berkeley. Well done. So this is the guy that we're talking about. And I, 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 had, I read four poems about him that I had written uh, over the course of decades. And at that time, I had not written this one, which I read at his memorial, which was on April Fool's Day and Easter combined. So I'm going to start with this one, just to move it along, if you would. It's called One Pack of Dews at a Time. You stupid bastard! You put a shotgun to your chest and pulled the trigger. Sure, it took the shotgun 50 years to go off, but it went off nonetheless. The American Tobacco Company needed those 50 years so they could collect all those dues from you. One pack of dues at a time. Collected over the ages in exchange for bringing you a slight partial relief from the nervousness, the anxiety for which they themselves were partly responsible. <laughs> yeah, I know the key word there is partly. I know that there was the rest of the world and all its crap. And that innate chemical imbalance with which you were born, I always admired you for your struggle against that. When you were nearly dead, I asked you whether any of this was a surprise to you. Nah, you shrugged, not at all. I asked you how it all got started. I came from a family of smokers, you said, as if predetermination were just one more straw than you could struggle against. Fifty years of slight anesthetic to trade off against the twelve more years that you could have struggled here in this plane of existence. You stupid bastard. You stupid fucking bastard. I loved you. I loved you in the greenness of our youth when you asked me to drive you to Northern California because you just had to kiss Margaret O'Malley's lips once again. I discovered that California is more than the paved over desert that is Los Angeles. I discovered that Margaret had a friend. And as the four of us parked overlooking the lights of Santa Rosa, steaming up the windows, we made the Buick special. <laughs> I loved you in the days of the Flash Complex in Pasadena, when our party of poet warriors returned from a successful visit to Mexico, and you rolled us a joint using an 8.5 by 11 sheet of notebook paper. <laughs> I loved you when you discovered the love and spoonful and in full mania you came over to recite the lyrics word for word while drumming crazy hambone rhythms on your thigh. I loved you when I offered to take you with me to the Monterey Pop Festival. Oh no, you said, you couldn't. You had instead to rid your place of the giant cockroaches that in your DDT dreams threatened to eat you while you slept. You said that one asked the other, shall we eat him here or take him home? We better eat him here, said the other. If we take him home, the big guys will get him. I loved you in the days of Tortilla Flat in San Francisco, when you were still across the country yet introduced me to your ex-girlfriend who had come out here. She became the mother of my only child who was the key to future generations who I am ever so sure will save the world from driving over the cliff of its own ignorance. <laughs> I loved you when you led the line of giant dancing condoms that handed a means of prophylaxis to the mayor in a parade in San Francisco, as if the mayor would ever use prophylaxis on anything, including his thoughts. <laughs> 
I loved you on every April Fool's Day when you dressed up in a rainbow wig and blew bubbles at passing cars on Telegraph Avenue and University Avenue in Berkeley. I loved you wearing a fool's cap in the Sierra snows in the middle of winter, gathering of fools on the very spot where the Donner Party ate its own dead to survive. I loved you when you went into electric shock therapy in decades-long quest to get your brain right. It turned out to be a matter of chemistry, and after all the rest of us had given up on you, you got it right and returned the full Allen to us in the final decade of your life. I loved that even with your battle with chemistry still raging, you rose above it all to go out and help others with their problems, helping with the neighborhood association, helping with the English as a second language class, and after you'd come down with it yourself, helping the Northern California Ataxia support group. But I, I loved you most of all for remaining a poet warrior for all these years, even when you felt that every person on earth with the possible exception of Marie, had abandoned you. You moaned about our indifference like Jesus on the cross. You stupid bastard. You stupid fucking bastard. I loved you. From now until forever, I will shed no tear for you.